About 5,000 years ago, China's Yellow Emperor, Huang Di, sent out 5,000 emissaries all around the globe looking for those ingredients that would help to prolong life and would help to serve as the base of all of Chinese medicine. And actually, Huang Di is the father of Chinese medicine. In addition to that, he's the father of written Chinese itself. He's considered the father of Chinese mathematics. He's considered the father of Chinese philosophy and uh, quite a remarkable person. Well, he also discovered a, a particular ingredient, one of the herbs that his emissaries brought back from, from their explorations, called Ganoderma lucidum. Actually, it was called in Chinese Lingxi. Ganoderma lucidum means bright, shiny skin in Latin. Over 5,000 years ago, Ganoderma lucidum was crowned king of all the herbs, and it has retained that title for all of that time. In fact, nowadays, we know that there are all kinds of things that we have scientifically documented that are found in Ganoderma lucidum that have helped it maintain its status as the, as the great uh, king of all of the herbs. For instance, it has ingredients that will help to support the immune system. It has ingredients that oxygenate the body. It has ingredients that can help boost energy. It provides over 200 phytonutrients, including more than 150 powerful antioxidants. It uh, has ingredients that will support the blood circulation. It has ingredients that are going to promote cellular rejuvenation. It's going to detoxify your body. It's going to support restful sleep, and it will promote sexual stamina. In fact, the Yellow Emperor had 2,000 concubines, and that may have been one of the reasons why he sent those 5,000 emissaries around the globe to try and find those ingredients that would best help him. It's actually thought that the Yellow Emperor and those people that he sent were the founders of Japan. Some of them became the founding families of Japan, and there's even some discussion that some of those that he sent out became the fathers of the Maya over here in the Americas. Ganoderma lucidum is considered a powerful adaptogen. What is an adaptogen? An adaptogen is an ingredient that helps your entire body manage the stress so that whatever the stress might be, whether it's from a sickness or, or from uh, work or from whatever it might be, lack of the proper nutrients or whatever, it helps the body to manage stress, whatever, however it comes, so that your body actually maintains its, its um, well-being, its, its wellness. Um, it, included in those adaptogenic properties are probably some of the other ingredients that are found in Ganoderma lucidum. For instance, there are over 125 different triterpenes. Um, these are very important ingredients for the health of the body. Um, there are also, uh, one, of those, one of those that we know of that's been studied considerably is gonoderic acid. In fact, you will find hundreds of studies about gonoderic acid on PubMed on the websites uh, that the National Institutes of Health maintains. Um, germanium is another uh, important ingredient that's found in it um, and other trace minerals. Germanium is particularly important because it provides a whole bunch of negative ions. It produces negative ions, one of the few food sources of negative ions to this level. And um, the germanium is very powerful in helping to protect your body at a cellular level. There are also over 150 antioxidants, which uh, also help protect you at a cellular level. We have all kinds of polysaccharides in gonoderma lucidum, including beta-glucan. Beta-glucan is one of those really critical uh, polysaccharides that helps to support the immune system. Uh, we also have coumarin. Uh, many of you have heard of coumarin and how derivatives of coumarin are used. Uh, mannitol. Mannitol is something that has been found in a couple of different different plant sources. Uh, one that has been very powerful is aloe vera. In fact, there are entire companies dedicated to the mannitol in aloe vera. You may have heard of, of some of those kinds of companies. And then we have um, alkaloids. There are all kinds of alkaloids in, in Ganoderma lucidum, and those have many metabolic benefits that your body can use so that you actually, your metabolic processes and systems are working and functioning better. And there's so much more about this amazing, amazing mushroom. We're just actually beginning to learn.
Well, right now, there's a lot of confusion about gonoderma lucidum. I've kind of given you a little history, a little bit about why it's so important. Well, everybody seems to be realizing that right now. But there's all kinds of misinformation about gonoderma lucidum that's out there on the internet right now. For instance, there's kind of this attitude of somehow my gonoderma lucidum is better than your gonoderma lucidum. Uh, however, most of the companies that are saying that are essentially using the same methods that have been used for over 5,000 years ago since the Yellow Emperor and his emissaries first found this ingredient. They're using the same methods. They haven't changed in nearly 5,000 years. Uh, and they're all saying, you know, we get our gonoderma lucidum from Asia. And it's all produced using the same methods that the Yellow Emperor did, but mine is somehow better than yours. Well, in the last 10 years, there have been some things that have changed. But let's look at why, there, what, what some of the reasons are behind the science, just the pure logical uh, science of gonoderma lucidum and what's going on. As you can see, this is gonoderma lucidum growing in a natural state out in the wild. Gonoderma lucidum, for instance, is often found in rotting trees and rotting wood, and it will sprout up and grow there. Uh, it, it obviously was very potent for its time and the way that it was grown, um, because the Yellow Emperor found it, and it's held its title of king of all the herbs for over 5,000 years. But this is one of the ways that gonoderma lucidum is grown. In modern times, we've tried to make the process a little better. So we take gonoderma lucidum and we uh, have grown it in logs. We, we take a little spore and we insert it in logs and we put them inside of a greenhouse or a protected environment and we grow it in logs. But once again, it is grown in a protected environment. A third way of growing it, in many companies, they'll put gonoderma lucidum in a plastic bag and charcoalized palm tree strips or bark or other things like that. And they'll take this uh, charcoalized bark or these palm tree strips and they'll put them in a bag and they'll put in a piece of the mushroom skin and the mushroom then will begin to uh, convert what's inside the bag into a mushroom until it reaches a point where it no longer has nutrients or anything else, and then it creates this flowering body. In all cases, you're going to see that this red, bright, shiny skinned fruiting body is what all of these companies are marketing. I would like to clarify that that is not necessarily the best part of the mushroom. What is this red fruiting body that, that we're seeing? It actually develops right at the end of the life cycle of the gonoderma lucidum. So the gonoderma lucidum is actually the fungus that's growing inside of whatever environment it might be. It's converting that environment into fungus until there are no more nutrients left, or until there's too little water, or until there's too much heat. And then it produces a fruiting body. What is the purpose of the fruiting body? This is something that appears at the very end of the life cycle, and it's to produce the spore, so that the spore can be spread around to perpetuate the mushroom before it dies. So this is at the end of the life cycle when the nutrient value is at its very worst. This is the part of the mushroom that for over 5,000 years people have been using, the part that's about to die. So let's look a little closer at gonoderma lucidum. If you were to take one of these mushrooms, and I don't know if you've ever had an opportunity to see gonoderma lucidum in person up front and personal, but I have. And when you see it, it's a very hard, hard, it's, in fact, they are now making building materials out of this mushroom. It's such a hard material. So there, and you'll see it, it looks like wood. It looks like, like plastic, actually, because of the shininess of the skin. And it, if you were to knock it on a table or something like that, it would sound like it. It would actually look to you more like wood than it would look like what we consider to be a mushroom. To us, mushrooms are typically tender, juicy uh, little tidbits that we, that we combine with our food. That is not what gonoderma lucidum is like. So you can see that they actually cut gonoderma lucidum up into pieces, and then they will boil it in hot water. If you take vegetables and you boil them in hot water, what's happening to the nutritional value? Are you going to get some out of, those, out of those vegetables that you're boiling? Yes, you do. Obviously, you do. People can live on boiled vegetables. Uh, they've done it. They will continue to do it. Uh, that's a way that people continue to prepare things. But we're learning that the less boiling you do, the better the vegetable 
is because it retains more and more of the essential nutrients, enzymes, other things that are in there. Imagine then that for 5,000 years we've taken Gonoderma lucidum and we've boiled it. What is it that we're missing out on? Now, can we just take that mushroom and grind it up and use it and eat it? Well, no, because actually most of that mushroom is, uh, is not edible and you're not really using it. In fact, you'll see in the, in the lining of the mushroom, you'll see where the spores are developed and you'll see little, little arms that are coming through it or little veins that are stretching through the mush mushroom itself. And those are actually filled with the potent ingredients that we're trying to extract. So when we cut it up into pieces, we're extracting it through the boiling process so that we can pull out the little bit of good that's left in there. Another method that has been used and is used today, uh, a little more modern, but has much the same benefit or the same result uh, on, on the benefits of Gonoderma lucidum, is, is alcohol. When, alcohol, when Gonoderma is processed with alcohol, once again, it's used as a solvent, just like the water. The water, the hot water, is used as a solvent to, to dissolve the Gonoderma lucidum extracts and, and extract it from the fruiting body. Well, the same happens with alcohol. So, there are some companies that have focused, because of, of what we're talking about, they've decided to focus on the spore, the seeds. Now, this, this is actually a pile of spore, of Gonoderma lucidum spore. You can see it's pretty, it's red, it uh, has all the color of, of the pretty red mushroom. But the spore actually identically has this very, very hard shell that is developed with it. For it to be processed, it has to be smashed. It has an oily substance that's included in it. A lot of people just market that oily substance. The thing about a seed is, are you really getting the total benefits, once again, of an entire plant because you're eating its seed? Now, sometimes we eat fruits and nuts, and those, of course, uh, some of them have seeds, and we do eat those, and there are some benefits to them. But with Gonoderma lucidum, it's more akin to a lemon seed. When you bite into a lemon seed, are you getting the benefits of a lemon? No, you are not. When you bite into a lemon seed, are you even getting the benefits of a lemon tree? No, you are not. There are certain things that are there. It, does it have the genetic capability of producing those? Well, of course it does. That's part of what a seed is all about. But it's actually the fruition, drawing on the nutrient base, pulling all of the things, all of the biochemical processes that naturally go, are working inside of this, of this mushroom. Not something that happens in a laboratory, but in the mushroom itself, in the fungus itself. Uh, all of those processes are ongoing, and the spore doesn't have that either. So this is actually mycelium. As you can see here, this is a picture of mushroom mycelium. What we do is we take a piece of the mushroom, and you can see in the center, we take a piece of the fungus, and we put it in a substrate. What is a substrate? A substrate is a nutrient broth that we use that has all of the food that the, that the mushroom is going to need, that the fungus is going to need. All of, the, um, all of the nutrients, all of the water, everything all together and it's put into a bag. And we put that, we'll put that into that. Well, the mycelium is the growing part of the mushroom. And it's where the mushroom has all of its nutrients. And this is where most of the life cycle benefits come from. Now, many companies attempt to just uh, sell mycelium. Um, most of them have not learned the proper kind of processes for doing that. And the materials that they use as a substrate also will impact how effective the mycelium is in converting those materials into gonoderma lucidum, into genetically verifiable gonoderma lucidum. Uh, Ghana Life has processes that convert it nearly 99.7%. So let's look at this once again. All of the processes of the mushroom are important. We want a Ganoderma that has 365% because there are 365 days in a year. We want it to have 365% of all of the good that you're finding in Ganoderma lucidum. Whether it's in the spore or in the mycelium or wherever it is, all of the good needs to be brought into play. So we do that. Now, as you know, Gonoderma lucidum, and I've uh, alluded to it several times, is part of the fungus family. Uh, the fungus families actually can be quite a pretty family. There are some beautiful, beautiful mushrooms out there. Um, and it's a powerful family. Over 90% of all of our antibiotics that we produce and that we use today that have saved 
hundreds and maybe millions of lives, all are derived from mushrooms. In fact, penicillin comes from this family. Now, penicillin, as you can see, is not maybe the prettiest of the family. In fact, it's kind of a little scary looking. But that's what we take. We take this mold, which is a fungus, and, and we actually develop that into penicillin. So what is the difference between our product and all of these? How is it that we're not taking and boiling things or using harsh chemicals? How is it that we're able to deliver a 100% organic, 100% raw, 100% whole gonoderma lucidum that we call gonoderma lucidum 365? Well, the process is, first of all, in our substrate. That's one of the secrets that we have. The substrate is made of a grain that's organic, and we take that and we mix other things in with it. And this is a grain that you should eat yourself. It's very good for you. It's very healthy for you. It's a, it's a, a, a little bit of a rare grain, but it's a, it's a beautiful kind of a grain. We take that. We make sure that all of the nutrient mix is in there. Then we take a piece of the, of the fungus itself, and we put that inside of the bag. And slowly what happens is the fungus begins to convert every last bit of the contents into gonoderma lucidum. And because there's no lack of water, no lack of nutrients, it doesn't turn into a bright, shiny, pretty uh, wooden mushroom at the, end of the, at the end of the journey. What we get is a 99.7% conversion of all of the materials inside of that bag into genetically verifiable gonoderma lucidum. In fact, our gonoderma lucidum is actually registered with the National Center for Biotechnology and Gene Bank. That's the National Center for Biotechnology Gene Bank that is run by the National Institutes of Health. Also happens to be the ones that run the PubMed website where you can find all of the research, hundreds, thousands of pieces of documented research on gonoderma lucidum. And, um, and, and this is a very in interesting aspect. It actually allows us to show you that our gonoderma is 99.7% pure, DNA pure gonoderma lucidum that you're consuming in this process. Nobody was able to come up with this process. It's really something that happened in the last 10 years. In fact, what they do is they fill up the, the bags with the substrate. We put it in a, in a laboratory. And in a matter of meters, we can grow 200,000 tons of gonoderma lucidum a year. That would take other companies acres and acres and acres and plantations, huge plantations, to extract what we can extract in just months from our gonoderma lucidum. We actually can grow this anywhere, and we happen to grow it right here in the United States, and it is USDA certified organic gonoderma lucidum. It is EU certified gonoderma lucidum uh, organic once again, certification is on that it's organic. Um, and we also have a kosher rating on the gonoderma lucidum. We have the star K kosher rating on our gonoderma lucidum. Great thing means that we have high quality gonoderma that is processed in a way that is considered kosher. In addition to that, we follow GMP standards. So we have good manufacturing uh, product certification from the Natural Products Association. So we have taken great care to be able to, to deliver the highest quality gonoderma lucidum. Now what's the benefit of this kind of gonoderma lucidum over what you can get out of something that's grown in the wild? We can show that this is hundreds of times more potent than gonoderma lucidum grown in the wild. Let me repeat this. Hundreds of times more potent than gonoderma lucidum grown in the wild. And then what we do with it is we actually take it and we micronize. It goes through a micronization process where we break down the particles so far that it can be mixed into a drink, it can be mixed into anything and become completely bioavailable. So when you get a cup of our delicious coffee that we happen to have uh, this in our coffee, you're thinking, wow, I'm going to get mushroom sediment in the bottom of my coffee. You will not because the micronization process keeps it in suspension and you don't even know that there's anything else other than delicious coffee. 
So that's one of the benefits of what we're doing, that micronization process, so that when it's put into a beverage, it's as small, so small that it can, can penetrate and become bioavailable to every cell in your body. So once again, here's our certifications, certified organic by the USDA, certified organic by the EU, kosher certified, and GMP certified by the National Natural Products Association.